Welcome. Let's play Rule the Waves 3 as Germany starting in 1935. It's the start of 1946 and we are going to have a war. That's what my spies tell me, that in six months there will be war. And so, yeah, it's time to do a little bit of thinking and planning. Obviously, it could be the first month or the sixth month. We don't know. But in a previous game, I had this kind of intelligence and I thought it was a bit conditional, but it's not. There is going to be war, honestly. So before we headlong ourselves into that, there's the small matter of reviewing the last year. Haven't done very much on the design side, but we've got a lot of new plane developments that either came through in 1945 or will see fruition in this year. We did build nine new destroyers. We now have quite a coherent modern destroyers force. So I'm really pleased that the last few years worth of emphasis on the light forces has given us a really solid base to carry on. We re rebuilt two carriers to handle jets, possibly a little early, but never mind. And we've refitted three heavy cruisers, actually four. The next one is, uh, the fourth one's going to arrive this coming month. And, you know, the big news is we're going to have war with Britain in six months, probably with France as well, because tensions between Britain and France are very low, and probably supported by our wonderful long-term allies, Italy. Japan, sadly, having fallen away, but possibly um, a help to us, I'm not quite sure. The annual funding has been climbing, 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 so an extra 10,000 this year on top of an extra 10,000 the previous year, and extra money on the year before that. Our funds on hand have increased by 53,000. We've been Keeping kind of a low bit on building and mainly focusing on refitting in the last year, with the exception of submarines. We have a high for a month churn of submarines being built, and that's actually creating quite a, a, a bubble because it costs, I don't know, 110 per coastal submarine, but only like 20 or 30 when it's actually in service. So building a lot is now costing several thousand um, but you know it'll be i hope a good investment i know there's been reports i've seen i think uh bygun and, and others claiming claiming reporting that submarines don't seem to be very effective in rule the three high losses for small amounts of um, actual damage so part of the reason why i'm putting more of an emphasis on submarines than i would usually do is actually to check out whether that's true. And as soon as war starts, I will be building armed merchant cruisers to boost that test. And also I will be building, uh, obviously, a lot of mine sweeping trawlers. Construction as a consequence has fallen slightly as it had the previous year. And the total number of techs this year has gone right down. I think it was something like 19. Now that was, from March, so it's really only seven in the last nine months because last year I kind of forgot to do it in January and I couldn't backtrack how many we'd had uh, in January and February and March. Unrest is still six and tensions with everybody else is pretty low, low medium for the USSR and the USSA, but I, I don't think that's going to be a problem. So it's a pretty good situation with which to go to war with Britain and probably France. A quick look at the balance of forces I thought was in order. So I've done three numbers. The gray is Germany, or dark gray, I should say. The gray blue is the British home fleet, and the dark blue is the whole Royal Navy. So. You can see in battleships and battle cruisers, Germany has four, Britain has six in the home fleet, and a seventh somewhere else. Likewise, carriers, we are matching the home fleet in fleet carriers, and there are another two out in the rest of the world. 
In light carriers, they have seven. They've actually increased this by two. I checked this, I think the month before or something, and they only had five. So this has gone up and there's another one somewhere else in the world. It's with cruisers, you can see the cost of Empire. Only two heavy cruisers out of 10 in the home fleet, giving us a small advantage. And eight out of 16 in the home fleet. And that has gone up. That was only two or three uh, a couple of months ago. So they are reinforcing the home fleet. But we actually have cruiser superiority, which is nice. And we are the same with our merchant cruisers, but only one of theirs is with the home fleet. Although technically, actually, one of ours is in the Mediterranean. So well, that's for the surface fleet, for the submarine fleet, or I guess for the blockading fleet is perhaps a better way to think about it. So our blockade strength is a little bit under 200, and theirs is nearly 300. So we will be blockaded. In terms of aircraft, although they have a much bigger air force than we do, they have a smaller number than we, a substantially smaller number in the Northern Europe. So long may that continue. Similar numbers around Corvettes and similar numbers, well, their destroyer force is about twice our destroyer force. And they've reinforced their destroyers as well. So quite a few there. And they need to be because we have considerably more submarines, about 70 something or other, with another, well, going to be well over 100 soon with the stuff under construction and their submarine forces. Nothing to worry about. But then, you know, they'll be blockading us so they won't have many targets. So that's the, that's the balance of forces. And then I just wanted to give some thought about how are we going to prepare for this war? So I've just gone down our major ship types. So the battle cruisers, we can't refit them. We can't risk having them go in and then war start. So I'm only going to refit them when they need to be repaired after battle. Ditto for the carriers. For the cruisers, we have, although we've refitted a lot of the heavy cruisers, we still have, I think, nine cruisers that haven't had a modern refit to increase their fire control to the most modern available and to increase their radar to the most modern available. So I'm going to do two sets of three. So this coming month, I'm going to do three cruisers and put them into reserve. And then in three months' time, assuming war hasn't broken out, I'm going to do another three. Um, and that will, you know, if, if it goes the whole distance till six months, that will give us six refitted and another three that still haven't been refitted. And for them, I'll do that when, when they need to uh, repair themselves. Looking at the destroyers, we have a mixed bag. So all of them could have the next level up of director. And all of them could go, I think, to Radar 4. So quite a bit of work could be done. Some, you know, these 1942 refits are actually in a pretty good state. So I'm not, they're not awful, but as they come through, I will be sending them to refit when they're repairing. Lastly, I'll give some consideration to whether to deploy the submarines outside of Northern Europe, or just keep them all in Northern Europe. I mean, for example, I could put some into the Mediterranean. I have bases in the Mediterranean, so that would be absolutely fine. I could send some to, obviously not the coastals, but some of the normal submarines to uh, the east coast of America or to the west of Africa. Let me know in the comments if you have an opinion about that. I'd quite like to, uh, to hear that. That's my, my thoughts around preparation for war. Let us get into it properly. Press the turn and enter into 1946. Are we going to get six months or are we going to get one? We've commissioned a submarine. I think we're about six months away from four a month arriving. So for the first six months, we're just going to get one each, but you know, every little helps. There's the Buka. 
Welcome back. Oh, the Japanese are offering to sell us the rights to turret eight, seven and eight inch autoloader. So normally I'd say yes. I'm going to say no for two reasons. First of all, I'm about to enter war and I probably, well, I certainly need the money. And then secondly, I've just refitted all of my eight inch guns cruisers. So I might as well just allow um, that to turn around normally. Also, I would probably have to lower air defenses or something like that in order to accept the weight of an auto loader. I mean, they're about 300 tons or something, and none of my ships are 300 tons knocking about. Uh, fascinating challenges of low carbon STS. Oh, good for them. I'm glad they're, uh, they're keeping happy. Oh, now I've seen this before that Britain has halted construction because of financial difficulties. I think it was a carrier then as well. So yeah, interesting. They, they are obviously maxed on their finances. Nothing else particularly important. Rumors are about to go to war with us. Okay, so not this month, maybe next month. Hum. So I wanted to take a Blucher and a Stuttgart and a Berlin and refit them. And then in, when they return in three months' time, refit another Blucher, sorry, another Lutzau, another Stuttgart, and another Berlin. So let's stick to the plan. Um, so, first thing, they need a new director, which doesn't cost. And there's only like five tons or something. It's the radar that um, pushes up, but it's going to be really useful. And even if I get rid of all of this light and medium AA malarkey, it's still that. So we're going to have to sadly lose one of our guns, which lowers our heavy by four, which is a shame, but there you go. And the same for the Stuttgart. And this is already at minus three. Uh, that's going to be a struggle. I take this up to five. Yeah, hmm. We might not be able to do it. We only have air two AA directors anyhow. Not that going up to four gives us very much. Taking down the light and medium AA to zero doesn't really help. It's going to be a no, I think, for the Stuttgart class. I mean, they've got level three radar, which is, you know, is good. Berlin's only have level two, and they really should have much better than that. So again, improve the fire control and improve the radar. Now, 100 tons, I mean, that's a heck of a lot. Uh, if I decrease one of the guns, no, nope, that's not going to do it. So I'm going to have to take out C turret, medium and light air defense. December, the budget was 520,000. And we seem to have had a 28,000 cut in our budget. And there was no message about that. I didn't see a message. Do you see a message? I mean, crikey, that's, that's not helpful on the very edge of war. Oh, come on. <laughs> so our budget's been slashed. Britain is apparently about to go to war probably this month, and our alliance with Italy has expired. Expired? Oh, God, that is so unfair. Oh, well, I didn't expect that. War has broken out between Britain and Japan. Even though we are not allied, Internal upheaval in Angola. If we send an expeditionary force, there's a chance we could take over the colony. 
will increase international tensions. Hmm. Now that is interesting. I mean, I'm, I am tempted to resurrect the German African Empire. Having a base in West Africa is also tempting. I mean, I would have to improve the air bases. I would have to look to the coastal fortifications. I'm pretty sure that Britain would have bases nearby and could amphibiously invade it. And I don't really have the forces to send to go there. So at another time, that would be quite interesting. But I think now that's probably an unwise distraction. Oh, there we see. We've got the autoloaders for ourselves anyhow. And improved electrical torpedoes. And here is the first of our jet fighters. Britain's increased its budget. And nothing else particularly interesting. Again, it's rumoured that Britain is about to go to war with us. They're being very belligerent. So yeah, just the two cruisers under reconstruction. Hmm. Okay. Let's go for March. In buying the rights to radar and electronics for 3,000 and a bit. I mean, we still have good relations with Italy and, you know, the, the money's fine. So, yeah, why not? Lightweight engine components. Complicated stuff. Um, angled flight deck. So oh, interesting uh, research is just bubbling under the service, surface. And here is the Henschel. So more air bases. Rumored to have halted construction of a Corvette because of financial difficulties. Well, things have to be financially difficult if, um, if that's true. Obviously, the monthly balance is creeping further into negative as I build more and more submarines. Okay, so there's the cruisers that have returned. Perfectly nice torpedo bomber. Electro boat. Okay. And I want to have a little look at our jet fighters, see if any of them have entered service and see if we have particularly any reliability rating for them. Yep, another Corvette delayed because of um, stuff. Hmm. They're rebuilding the Anson. Look at our aircraft types, bring it over here. Right, so no idea about reliability. Well, they're starting to come off the production line. They are, you know, pretty similar. I think the potential is marginally better, marginally faster, slightly longer range, slightly less tough. Slightly better bomb load, but it's that reliability that I want to know. Now, given that the dive bomber and torpedo, well, the dive bomber was in 1945, we still don't know whether it's reliable or not. Hmm. I'm not sure whether to retire the slightly, no, let's keep them going. Oh, the old missing a commander. Who's missing a commander? Ah, I wish the message would tell you where. It's the, um, the battle squadron uh, missing somebody. Right. Well, that would be interesting. I think the previous one got um, promoted. So what have we got when it comes to... Well, it looks like it's got to be Contra Admiral Pep of average. No negatives. Yeah, I think we'll definitely have him. And nice that the experience of this division is elite. Good thing to have for your capital ships. New docks. Must remember to set that off again. Oh, medium bomber to have a look. Whoa, <laughs> that's some improvement here. Yeah. 120 miles an hour increase in maximum speed and 115 miles an hour increase in cruise speed. 
I think I'm going to go for the Henschel to replace our very capable and trusty Junkers that's done a fantastic job since 1941. The Henschel, five miles an hour slower, two miles an hour slower on cruise, but over 200 miles extra range uh, across the board. Slightly less firepower and maneuverability, but tough, and an excellent bomb load, including 1,600 tons at light, up to four. 1,600 bombs at heavy. It can carry torpedoes out to medium range, and it can carry air-to-surface missiles out to heavy range. Yeah, that's that's a really big improvement. So let's pick that one. More air bases for Britain around the world. Okay, nothing much else there. I had my finger to remind me to start building a new dock, and I still forgot. Uh, missile stocks now adapted to mis new missile storage policy. Great, which is plentiful. That's that thing under doctrine. More money. Well, yes. Well, you might. So we'll be interested to see what it goes up. Improved ASW, improved of the mortar, and enables them on AV and CA. Okay. I suppose AVs are soon to become helicopter carriers. Uh, radar director for medium anti-aircraft. Understanding early surface-to-surface -surface missiles. Yeah, some groovy stuff. These are all the Baltic air bases. I'm going to say no. So Let's do the finger thing and increase the dock size. I mean, if we look on the Almanac, we will probably find ours is 66, Britain is 76, uh, 78 for France and so on. So yeah, we're still well behind. So we have nothing under construction. So let me have a little think about what might be a good idea to build. A couple of interesting comments from the previous video that I, I want to acknowledge. The first is uh, from Rendell Bird, who corrected me. I assumed that this H and M was the same as the H and M with torpedoes. So, for example, here the torpedo bomber can carry a torpedo out to medium range and two torpedoes out to heavy range. And so I thought the M and H in missiles were the same, but they're not. The M here is for a medium missile, and the H is for a heavy air-to-surface missile. Hmm, okay. So not range-dependent, and therefore it's unclear how far uh, these planes can go with these missiles. So we'll make a, a working assumption that it's only at heavy range but it could be further out. Next up, P. Tarakek. You didn't think about how to pronounce your name, did you? Suggested that he's had a lot of financial difficulties going to plentiful missiles after a war. So you shoot off all your missiles and then you've got to restock them. I'll need to watch that. We're up to 140 missiles, so it's slowly going up whether turning down to minimum or adequate or something. It affects availability in the first 18 months of war. So yeah, might it get expensive, so might need to uh, be careful about that. And someone, I can't find who, suggested that for my submarines, I should scrap some of these older ones because the later ones reliability is so much better. But, I don't know, we're, we're really close to war. The difference between 112 and 91, I mean, yeah, it's something, but it's not out of this world. It's not like this reliability is like 48 or something. So I'm going to hold on to these uh, to these submarines until uh, war cometh. 
Finally, a shout out to Laxon, who has done a brilliant comment on how to do night fighting with carriers. I'll work up a slide for that probably for the next video, but if you want to read it now, it's in pinned to the comments in episode 26. I'm going to put a second Berlin into rebuild. I'm, I'm toying with the idea of designing a new destroyer or a new cruiser. Um, but this close to war, and one of you did point out, just because the spy says there's going to be war, and repeated spies after that said that war is coming, doesn't actually necessarily mean it's bound to happen. Whereas in my France 1920 playthrough, I ignored the spy's warning, thinking, ah, oh, well, may, may, may. And war certainly came. So, yeah, you're in a bit of a sticky position around the whole war warning. Anyhow, we're on a war footing. So I'd like to start something new, but thinking that I'm going to have to be building a lot of mine-sweeping trawlers and some armed merchant cruisers and the increased expense of wartime maintenance, I'm going to hold my breath for a little while. So we've commissioned four submarines. So... Now we're commissioning for a month, so that's going to push up our submarine total quite a lot. You never know, perhaps this is deterring the British. A major arms manager wants to uh, share technology with the Soviet Union. Is this advisable? So the Soviet Union are at, I think, five, maybe six with us. So I don't think so. I don't think so. I mean, usually they just spy things off me anyhow. A new armor piercing and a radar director for medium AA, which is nice. I have I like medium AA, but I've sort of downplayed it a bit because I've been trying to get the biggest heavy AA possible. One of my captains has been promoted to a rear admiral. It's nice. Not seeing any, uh, any missing. So, oh, now, well, there obviously is. So let's just say no and go and explore for the missing one. Perhaps it's here. Ah, right. So it's this old torpedo division is going to need a new commander. Oh, okay, so we've got some new above average captains. So let's have good old Lutjens. Signed. There we go. Okay, and August. Probably a mistake in retrospect not to take the West African invasion attempt to increase tensions. I think we should go for the win. And of course, the British are fighting the Japanese, so I guess that's the other thing that's putting them off. Britain scrapping some old stuff. So I'm going to check if my new jet fighters have started appearing, so I just remind myself. The Henschel and the Feisler. And if we go to my air groups and look at that, the nope, 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 and nope, nope. Oh, okay. So none of them have got jet fighters currently. Yep, all of my fighters are the old Blossom Voom one. Or seven. So hopefully that will start and hopefully it will prioritize the carriers first. And more submarines and the return. Buying the rights to naval and mm -mm -mm. that will be no. Improved radar for cap. Britain increased its naval spending. It must be quite tricky. I wonder if the Almanac tells you of unrest in a country. I'm just thinking, you know, if I'm suffering from long-term high levels of unrest, uh, almost Britain, but no. Let's do the last of the Berlins. So that's all the cruisers underway. 
whether I take whether I take some of these destroyers and maybe upgrade two at a time from a division so that I don't, you know, wreck the whole division. Looking back at my old preparations for war notes, I noticed the Z61s and the 56s are in the worst state. So I think I will start with them. Particularly these Z61s, which um, haven't been modified at all. Let's do two of them. Take up the radar. Improve the fire control. And think about how to pay for any of that. Let's get rid of that. And this. Mm. I certainly don't want to get rid of a gun at this point. We may have to limit our hmm. So we could take the radar up to three and our fire control be improved and then give ourselves a couple of um, little light anti-aircraft. Hmm. Not, it's not as big an upgrade as I would wish. But at least it's the next level up. Let's go with those two. And let's see where the uh, Z6s are. And it's the same problem for the Z56s. It's not a surprise because they're, they're cousins of the 61 or poor antecedents. So, yeah, bit of a struggle there. So, which tells me I really need a new destroyer design. So let's have a little muse as to what is possible in the destroyer department. I didn't really want to do destroyer until SAMs became available. But it's still offering me, you know, I can do 3,000 ton and it's still offering me piddling little ships. Radar limit four. We can actually take it up a little bit. Still giving me um, torpedoes and some mines. Five dual purpose, not auto loading. We got auto loading seven and eight inch guns, but not auto loading five inch guns. Mm. No secondary or tertiaries, only 31 knots. We're really struggling. Let's take this up and see if that allows the speed to increase. At least a 32. A bit more of this. So the adding directors doesn't really improve it. So let's add some more mediums. Particularly now they're radar directed. So yeah, okay. It's not revolutionary, but and it's slightly slower. Let's Go with that. Um, oh, we're a bit top heavy. Oh, yes, I'm very top heavy. Hmm. Okay. Okay, just tweaked the light and medium guns to um, make the top heaviest thing. So, this feels like the ultimate old style destroyer before we get into missile age destroyers mines, torpedoes, guns. Anti-air, anti-submarine. Let's just check that we've got maxed on the anti-submarine. Yep, so that all looks good. So let's hear it for the Z96. Now, obviously, that's going to take a long time. It's a bit of long-term investment. I think with our oldest modern destroyers, for want of a better phrase, struggling to be upgraded, we need to push the destroyers on a little bit. So just as I was thinking we need some more modern destroyers, this Navy Secretary wants to build 18. Hmm, that's quite a lot. I mean, yes, if I say yes, sir, it'll give me prestige, which is nice, and it'll give me um, 
a little bit of a budget boost, but I don't think enough of a budget boost to uh, cover the costs of 18 new destroyers. But I, I might go for the middling here and say uh, it's neutral, it's neither a benefit nor a penalty, and agree to half that number. Nothing interesting in the news, and still no war. It was promised six months, and it's well over that. So yes, I will have to look at the next diplomatic incident. French, um, so that's no, because the French may well become allies of the British. The British increased their naval spending again. Uh, so yeah, so we said we'd build nine. There might be a bit of halted construction in this, but let's get nine underway. Yeah, look. So that will eat into things quite a bit and probably put a stop to my um, destroyer refit program whilst we're at it. At least that's got rid of the reconstructions. Okay, here's a tension event. So let's see if this has the right effect when we back our Balkan ally unconditionally. Close to mastering early surface to air missiles. Battle. Okay. So this is nice because it's, you know, taking a few bits off the Royal Navy who have increased their budget again. Okay, so that's lowered the uh, drain on our budget. So we are still, at, oh, we've gone to 12 with Britain and we are five and uh, eight with the Soviet Union. Hmm. Don't really want the Soviet Union to join in, otherwise I'd have to, because I've denuded the Baltic and the Baltic air bases. I'm just gonna see how many submarines we are getting. Ah, early surface to air missiles. That definitely calls for uh, at least one ship to be converted and to see what that looks like. Ah, finally. Finally, I thought it was never going to happen, but at the end of the year, boom, war at last. I'm going to stop it here, and I'm, yeah, delighted that we've got to this point. We've got some SAMs to play with, have a review of the year, and then launch ourselves into 1947 with war. Excellent. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.